more than just a rundown of what's going on. It means there's life in the church. It means there's community. That's why we do announcements. To let you know what church is about you. It's not about me. It's not about our pastors or board. It's about you. Got that? You. You are the church. And this is God's church. It's not Pastor Dallas's church or Pastor Tom's church. It's God's church. Joshua says he will never leave you or forsake you. He doesn't move to Michigan on you. He's right by your side. The same God that's raised me up to this point is your God. And believe me, if you only knew, I always took pride in doing the best I could, but man, my best wasn't always the best that God wanted out of me. So for me to be here right here right now to celebrate with you is a God thing. It's a you thing. Before we get to those announcements, though, um, I want to share with you, uh, we've got, I'm going to ask my assistant, uh, Carson, can you just bring those shirts, just the shirts? You know, we birthed almost, come on, girl, you can stay up here with me. Yeah, give Carson a hand. Riley, come on up here, girl. So you're going to give two of those to Riley. Don't, don't turn them around yet. One of the things that we birthed here, and it's usually going on right now, I say we've, we've always had kids' ministries, but in March of 2015, we said, God wants us to do something new with our kids' program, and we started Revive Kids. We had tremendous leadership up till then, but we needed to do something to fit where we were at, to fit where God was going to take us. And so we, we launched March 1st. Actually, it was supposed to be March 1st. We got an ice storm that day, so we had to cancel church in March what are we in Michigan? Anyways, <laughs> ba-boom, psh. Anyways, March 8th happened, and the leaders began pouring in. Guys, you're going to hear this as a constant theme, but when God is in something and you've got to take a faith step, he will provide. He never gives a vision without provision. If you aren't getting provision, it's because you're not either acting in your vision or you haven't talked to God to even get the vision. So he began to give provision to revive kids. And Revive Kids now is incredible. The leadership, wow, blows my mind who we have. The kids are usually downstairs today for kids' praise and puppets, and they go to classes. But because of this special service, they're up here, and that's why we have that joy of the Lord that we can hear all around us. So here's what we want to do. Riley was always like, Daddy, you got Revive You shirts. We need Revive Kids shirts. So they're hot off the presses. Riley, can you show... Uh, and Carson, can you just show the different colors? That'll be available for $10 each. We've got them in extra small all the way up through um, adult, whatever you need. Here, you can hold this one, Precious. And all of our leaders, if you're a Revive Kids leader, thank you, Yasmin. We, we will be giving, all of our leaders will be getting red shirts like this as our gift to you for your leadership. You can wear it as much as you want. Uh, I hope we have to order another batch. We've got about 40 of these, and they're in a box. We didn't want to uh, unveil the surprise to right now. But this, to me, is what today is all about, what God does. What God does. This is a God thing. There are families in our church. There are families in our church who are in our church because of leaders that some of you don't even know their names. And we're going to make mention of that. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. We're going to make mention of some of those leaders. Yeah, you can ride off for right now. But there are families in our church because of Revive Kids, many of them. Never underestimate a kid's program full of Jesus. That's how God draws mom and dad, aunts and uncles, grandparents. Something about those beautiful kids. Speaking of kids, I'm going to turn it over to my mom, my beautiful mom. She is going to make a special presentation with the Rainbows Club. And then we'll dismiss you kids down to your Revive Kids classes. All right. Actually, Margaret and I uh, are co-teachers for the Rainbows Club, and we've been doing it now for six years, and I was just sitting there thanking. Um, we have already had Honor Rainbows, Margaret, I'm thanking your three other granddaughters, plus Riley, four. 
So we've had four honor rainbows, and today we'll make two more rainbows we're adding to the mix, um, Carson and Ziva. And both of them have both completed all of their badges. Actually, you're supposed to complete 18, and they've completed 36. They've been in the program quite a while. <laughs> um, um, but anyway, our program, we, it extends a little bit further, and they do give you uh, an extra year, but actually some of our girls have to, they double up on badges that we start in the beginning. They don't remember it at three years old, but it's a great program. And I'm going to get Margaret to explain to you a little bit about the Rainbows Club. Rainbows Club is a two-year program. The, Scott, the sponsor guide contains curriculum and support materials for 24 units. Each unit has four lessons and can, be, and can be completed in one month. Your Rainbows will need to complete only 18 units, which is nine each year, during their time in Rainbows Club. You and your club may select which units you want to work on during the year. Um, now, there's also been a third year added. So when a child completes a unit, he or she earns a colorful unit badge to wear on his or her vest. And to earn a badge, a child must complete the unit activity pages and memorize the unit memory verses. The Noah's Art Badge, well, children earn their Noah's Art Badge when they memorize all the Rainbow Club distinctives. So I'm going to let Margaret, we're going to ask uh, the two little C's girls, our twins, are they up here? Uh, oh, Emily, and actually, yes, yeah, Sarah's working in the sound room. She's going to get them up here for us. And also, we're going to go on and ask Carson and Ziva to come up. And also, if the moms are here for the Honor Rainbows, uh, Rachel and M Megan, we'll need you to come up as well. Okay. I'm going to let Margaret call out. These are our two, I say two newest. They've been part of the program for two years, but it's uh, Emily and Claire. Okay, so Emily and Claire both earn... The kangaroos, the birds, the giraffes, the rabbits, the ladybugs, the parrots, the dogs, the monkeys, the zebras, the camels, the owls, the cats, the chicks, the hippos, the tigers, lions, turtles, frogs, and dolphins. completed once they get all the um, the badges are sewed on, but they're just getting it for the first time now. Okay. Now for Carson and Ziva, um, they've earned, and I'm going to just quickly read off theirs, uh, the beavers, elephants, turkeys, donkeys, kangaroos, birds, giraffes, rabbits, ladybugs, parrots, dogs, monkeys, zebras, camels, owls, cats, hippos, lions, and turtles. They earned all of those, and... And Ziva has all of her badges right here, and her mommy's going to sew these on. But this one is Carson's. We've got hers, thanks to Sarah C's, one of our moms, offered to sew all of Carson's on so she could leave and take hers to Michigan. So. You can turn around. She's even got them on the bottom. But you can see how, how nice they look. Um, and Mark, you can take those out. They're the pins. They're the two of them. We have Honor Rainbow pin. And this, what their certificate says is that Ziva, which is Ziva over here, practice little Ziva, and Carson, huh? Uh, Ziva, which is over here, and Carson, they have grown up together, literally, and they have been in rainbows the entire time. They both have earned their 36 units, and I didn't think it would be fair to let Carson become on a rainbow without Ziva, because they're best buds. And um, they're going to still be, she'll still be in our rainbows for a little bit longer, because uh, she won't go out until she finishes first grade. Um, but um, anyhow, we are going to give them both their certificates. Once they just the green one says they've completed 36 units in Rainbow Zoo Club, and then their orange certificate says they've satisfactorily completed the requirements for the Honor Rainbow Achievement Program on this 18th day of November 2018. We're so proud of them, and um, the moms got their you already got their thanks. Huh? Okay, so thank you all so very much, and we will continue.
on with rainbows. Margaret's going to do a special prayer over Carson with Carson getting ready to leave and move away from us. She's been a real joy to be in our class, and I've been very fortunate to be her Mimi and to get to have her in my class all of these years. Um, We're going to miss her a lot. She's the life of our little party as well as all the other ones, but just taking one away is going to be a big change for us. So we're going to have a special prayer for her. Great. Isn't church awesome? Not only for community, but to strive, learn about Jesus. Anyone recite all those animals back that Margaret gave us? Felt like I was going through a tour of the zoo. It's pretty phenomenal. Thank you guys for sharing in this day. We're, we're a little bit out of our norm in terms of how we, we normally go about service, but you, I think you understand. And uh, Man, tears are healers, aren't they? They have a way of healing the soul, so don't hesitate. Just to give you a few more uh, announcements, we really are so grateful that you're here. If you're a visitor or maybe it's been a while since you've been here, please fill out a Connect card. We want to connect with you. Our website, calvarygrace.org. Our Facebook page, Calvary Grace La Plata. Our Revive Youth Instagram page is revive underscore youth underscore La Plata. And you can go right to calvarygrace.org and access all of those. Real easy with the click of a button. You can also go on our YouTube page where you can see services just like this, as well as a lot of other videos that we put on. And I love how God uses technology and media to meet the needs of those in your community. Well, today uh, is a special day for a lot of reasons. Downstairs, we are continuing with our Talking with God series uh, and the three-year-old to first grade class. Love this series. Teaches kids how to pray. Uh, Also, Parables of Jesus, they are winding down. Final one, it's the parable of the lost son. You know what? Thanksgiving is on the horizon. What better way to thank God than we've all been that lost son. We've all been that prodigal. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful thing going into Thanksgiving that they're learning about. Right after the service is our farewell lunch. And can I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to tell you, but kind of do it in a nice way. We want to see you downstairs. I understand if you have to leave. I really do. My family does. But we would love to connect with as many of you as possible downstairs after the service for the farewell lunch. And while we're at it, I really do appreciate. So does the lead pastor. So does our board, our leadership, all the ladies who have been they are down there right now. Uh, Norma was kind of leading that team, Norma Kret, and she was up here on the worship team. Just thank them so much for all their preparation, putting that together. That's huge. Uh, sometimes those things uh, that, that you don't see up on stage, you don't realize what's going on to make today what it's about. So we're so thankful. On Tuesday, there's no prayer from noon to 1 p.m., no prayer from noon to 1 p.m. on Tuesday. Also Wednesday, no classes, no church 
It's one of those Wednesdays that comes right before a holiday. So it's Thanksgiving Eve, and uh, we just want you uh, to share in this time with your families. We know people are traveling. And if you, uh, let me do this. Let me, let me challenge you. If you're at home, if you're staying here in the area, and you want to be a blessing, uh, to, we have some military uh, guys and also some people not in the military who may not have uh, a place to go. Their, their, their homes aren't here, and they may not have a place to go for uh, Thanksgiving, and you want to open up your home, get in touch with myself uh, or uh, one of our other leaders, uh, your, your lead pastor. We want to make sure they have a place to go on Thanksgiving, and if you want to open up your home just for Thanksgiving meal, that would be such a blessing. And so just let us know if your home is available, and we'll relay the information and get you connected. Uh, looking ahead, ladies' Christmas dinner, men's Christmas dinner, Thursday, November 29th, 6 p.m. There you go, Olive Garden, Waldorf, uh, soup, salad, and breadsticks, and all the pasta you want. So, ladies, this is the time to really celebrate the season. And then men's Christmas party at the Green Turtle. Great food, great man place. Please come out. Awesome opportunity to invite friends. Invite people that don't normally come to church to one of the – I mean, everyone loves food and good time, and we play games, give away all kind of door prizes. So, uh, again, mark that on your calendar. We love to ring in the season here at Calvary Grace. We're always looking for people who are interested in fulfilling their God-given callings in church. So if you want to volunteer, we throw this kind of graphic up where, you know, you never have enough media people and tech people, right? We do, y'all, if you've been in our church, we put this up every week. Or if you want to get involved in Revive Kids, but really whatever God's leading you to, this is just a symbolic uh, graphic of where God wants to call you to. Church is always fun when your talents are involved in church. So uh, just encourage you along those lines. And one last thing, Please fill out this form right here in your bulletin packet if you don't have an updated, uh, if you have updated information or you haven't filled it out. It's our Calvary Grace directory form. We'll be giving those out the end of December so you can get in contact with others. Whether you fill one in or not, the, sec- the, the uh, pastor secretary has spoken. Fill, uh, <laughs> fill it out, update it. It would really uh, be appreciative. So thanks so much. Well, on that note, we are uh, going to turn it over to your lead pastor and uh, thanks for being patient. Also, as we turn it over to him, I'm going to get all the kids. You can be dismissed to your classes now. All the kids will make this transition as quick as possible. If you're three years old to fifth grade, three years old to fifth grade, we will do that. Well, good morning once again. We're grateful that you're here, and it's so good to see some that I haven't seen for a long time in our service today, and it's a joy to have you with us. joy to have my brother and his wife and his daughter, Brittany, and her husband, Jonathan, drove up from Richmond. Really appreciate them being uh, here in the service today. He's going to help us with a final prayer at the end of the service this morning. Well, our family knew this day was approaching since September the 16th, and our church did. Our family knew that since May. Our youth pastor and my oldest son, Dallas, and his family are moving tomorrow uh, to take on a next-generation youth pastor position at Bridgewood Church in Clarkston, uh, Michigan. That's 40 inches of snow a year. Yeah. And our loss is certainly their gain. Dallas has attended Calvary Grace Assembly of God. Since I came here as pastor 30 years ago, he was 12 years old when he started. He, was, he started serving as youth director back in 1999, serving for 15 years on a volunteer basis. And he came on staff full-time as a youth pastor and church ministries director in 2014. And uh, he was in that uh, area of ministry for the last four years. And that's a total of 19 years working with the youth through our church. I think that is amazing. That is amazing. 
And it hasn't been Dallas alone. His wife Megan, both of them together, have led community Easter egg events out here in the field, fall festivals over the last five years. Sometimes we had over 500 people in attendance at those events. And this past Wednesday evening was his farewell service with Revive Youth downstairs. And uh, what I love about Dallas's ministry is he never makes it about himself. I love what the youth gave him Wednesday night right here. We put it up. It's all about the uh, journey. It's not the destination. And that's the way that Dallas certainly lives. And uh, even last, that uh, Wednesday night, he was encouraging them uh, about their future as a group. And uh, he was commissioning the leaders he was diligently trained over the last three or four months to assume duties. And uh, you can never take anybody's place, but they can, uh, uh, they can assume some of your duties. And I'm going to off, go off cue real quick. Do you want to, uh, the batons now or afterwards? We'll do it now. It's a good time to do that. Dallas has trained the following leaders to take those duties. He started months ago. And uh, he'll call their names and ask them to come and... Uh, as he uh, hands off the baton of ministry to them. Well, remember in the Bible, Moses was a leader of the children of Israel. And then he passed away, and then Joshua assumed leadership. And there was a baton passing. It wasn't under Moses' leadership that the children of Israel crossed into the promised land. It was under the leadership of Joshua. And one of the things that we did uh, on Wednesday is we talked about a very important scripture verse. And um, I'm going to get you to, if you, if you have your phone, I want to make sure I don't cheat it because i got a lot of emotions going on in my head right now. But Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 is what God told Joshua. He told him, and God has got that word for our church. This isn't just about me transitioning on. This is about where our church is going. If anybody says, oh, Pastor Dallas and Megan are leaving, I got to go find another church, then you can't be in the will of God if this has been your church. Don't leave now. Don't leave now. What if the children of Israel would have stopped marching around the walls of Jericho on day five or day six? You wonder if there was anyone who said, ah, I'm not sure the Bible doesn't say this. I'm going to walk down. I'm going to walk out on this march around and let the other guys. And they didn't share in the glory of the moment. The glory of the moment was day seven, seven times on that day under Joshua's rule. Your moment's coming. Your walls are about ready to break down. They're already breaking down. I've seen it in families. God uses transition to sometimes get our attention and to get us directed in the path he wants to take us, and he has to use that sometimes because we get in our comfort zones. And certainly one of the things that I was taught as a leader was you always have to work yourself out of a job. Every good leader works himself out of a job. If you're not working yourself out of a job, then you're just right. keeping it all for yourself. So I'm going to call up these people, and as I do, uh, I'm going to give them a baton, and I'm going to tell you briefly what they're doing in your church. Your church, your church, God's church, and you together. It's called Passing the Baton, Pastor Dallas, Joshua 1, 9, and it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. If that doesn't get you stirred up and excited, nothing will. And if you feel lonely today, it's only because you got to get that baton. For God's got a baton for you, a figurative one. And he wants to place it in your hand and direct you. We're going to place symbolic batons in the hands of our core. These are our, our core leadership team. These are our leaders that are going to be kind of department heads, if you will, that old school kind of name. They're really they're point people. They're not point people because they get a cool title. They're point people because they serve. And they serve not only our church and God, but they serve your kids and serve your families. So first I want to call up, I don't know if, is Marianne, Coley, and Debbie up here? Debbie, they may be down in the nursery. Emily, if you could come down, I'm going to give you batons. They are leading our nursery. New Year's, or I'm sorry, new, new kids, what is it, New Year's is on the brain right now. So new kids, 
come into the flock, they're born, if you don't have a nursery team, you're stuck, right? Moms and dads can't receive from God. They are co-directors of our nursery. That's newborns to two years old. And God has already been directing. Mary Ann Coley's been involved with leadership of that for quite a while, four or five years. And now Debbie has joined her. And this is Debbie's daughter, Emily. Many of you know her. Those are the batons for Debbie and for Mary Ann. Then I'm going to call up Laura Luce here. Laura, here's your baton. Laura came to our church in 2014. She said from Vermont, she made a huge change. She left her home to come down here. Yeah, to be with a daughter and her son-in-law. Here's your baton, Laura. She is our Revive Kids Director, point person. She will be uh, making decisions with right-hand people who are involved on that team. It is, if you know anything about Revive Kids, I'm the minister, I've been the ministries director here, but I heartly, heartly do uh, a lot of that, I call it grunt, but enjoyable grunt work. Co coming up with crafts, coming up with all kinds of creativity to teach your kids. Laura revolutionized our Wednesdays for the second to fifth grade club on uh, in the summer 2017 with Wacky Wednesdays. Creative idea to teach, Jesus, teach kids about Jesus in kind of wacky ways, those wacky stories that don't make sense, but they do with God. Laura, thank you so much for your leadership. She helped launch Revive Kids, and it's so awesome to have her on leading that team. And then we have Sarah Sees. Sarah Sees is doing an unbelievable, unbelievably important role. Sarah is not only one of our small group leaders, just like Laura down in Revive Youth, but she has taken over all that behind-the-scenes stuff that is called administrative work. She is our admin assistant. God has blessed her with so much ability. And she's also got an ability to get things done, baby. Get it done. That's what life's about. And she's got a mind that is always two steps ahead of me, and I love that. And so I get to play. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. We need to get on that. Yes, yes. And Sarah serves with such humility. All of them do. Such humility. That's really the number one uh, attribute. And then the last two batons are going to a husband and wife team, Bill and Deborah Du Bois. Bill and Deborah. Yeah. God brought Bill and Deborah to our, to our church in August of 2017. If you don't believe God can work in a short amount of time, then you need to be, meet Bill and Deborah Du Bois. They've only been in our church for a year and some change, but it seems like they've been in our church for 20 years. They got immersed in every way, shape, and fashion. They're heavily involved in Revive Kids. Deborah can do both. She can be Revive Kids' extraordinary teacher, and she is, and leads that. She's got so much creativity, so much of a, of a way of getting down on their level and teaching them Jesus, teaching them it in a fun way. But she's also, her number one calling is to be Bill's wife outside of serving God. And as Bill's wife, she's going to be his co-director with Leading Revive Youth. Guys, I would have never considered moving to Michigan unless we had someone that I could pass the baton to in Revive Youth. That's a different animal. It's a different animal. Never. Appreciate it. I care way too much about these students. I care way too much about these students not to set them up. It's actually God who sets them up, but it's my job to make sure I'm obedient to God. And in May of 2018, this year, just six, six, five, six months ago, when the Lord began to direct me and said, I want you to consider this, and I said, no, God, no, no, no. Bill was starting to step up and revive youth in a way that I could not have predicted. He has a love for the kids. He has a love for leading the way, setting tones that they need to see. He's creative. He's fun. Fun is huge. If you're not fun, I'm sorry, you're probably not youth student material. You better be fun. They don't want to come to a boring youth service. I don't think adults want to come to a boring church service. He's fun, but he's also just as sensitive to the Lord. God is, I, do not be surprised where any of these leaders are at in three to four years. Do not be surprised when you hear about God transitioning. 
He, this, our church is just part of God's cycle of meeting the needs of the kingdom. And as he transitions them out, he'll bring other leaders in. And he may be calling you right now as you're watching this. Always heed the call of God. If you buck it, you'll be most miserable. If you go with it, that's where God sets you up for great things. So here we are. Mm -hmm. Emily, thanks for standing in for Mary Ann and Debbie, your mom. But you're looking at people who love God and love this church and love students and adults, mm -hmm. kids. They're going to be your advocate. They're going to be the people that are going to pray with you when times are tough. They're going to be the people that are going to root you on. And God's going to do even greater things through them than he's already done. I want you to be on board. Don't step off. Stay on board or you're going to regret it. God's plan is always the best plan. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Hey, guys, get you to come together real quick. Thank you. Nice. Dallas has done a great job at training people to take his place. He did a lot of different areas of ministry in our church and headed all that up. And made uh, We've really had some turnarounds in our church, and I really appreciate him doing that. I'm a member of a Facebook group called AG, Assembly of God uh, Lead Pastors. And October the 25th, I knew this day would be here in November, so I put a message on Facebook to all of my fellow pastors. I said, any thoughts on a good farewell message when our youth pastor, and in parentheses, who is also my son, is leaving for another church, moving to another state, he's done a superb job. Then I put one of those, uh, what do you call them, the faces with the uh, tear. There you go, you got it. And, uh, and so here's my first response. Actually, it was from a pastor uh, Shadrach Menzer, he's an AG lead pastor who incidentally pastors Red Oaks Assembly of God in Warren, Michigan, just 30 miles from where Dallas and Megan are going. And he says, I've got a great title for you for this morning. It's called, message titled, When Life Sucks, Congratulations for Your Son Praying for Your Parents. Now, <laughs> I had a real hard job putting some scriptures together for that. But then he added this, seriously. He says, kingdom resources are meant to build the kingdom. Your son is a kingdom resource. Too often we hold kingdom resources tightly and when we should hold what God gives us loosely. And we're stewards, we're not owners. As difficult as it is, you guys are releasing and sending your son. And I said, man, that spoke to my heart today. That's going to be the title of my message, releasing and sending your son. He goes on to say, we tell our church this. If God knows he can do something through us, he'll bring it to us. And by no means is that simply money. I want God to know that when he blesses me with something, anything, it won't stop with me. We're blessed to be a blessing. Isn't that so true? He does it in his church. We want to do it in ours. And would you agree with me today that our church has been blessed by Dallas's ministry to our church? And now is the time to give another church and another youth group the blessing that we've received over the last 19 years. In other words, we're releasing and we're sending you guys. 1 Samuel chapter 16, we read the story of David. And Israel was looking for a king to uh, take the place of their first king, Saul, who had just fallen away from God and started leading the nation of Israel in some really anti-godly ways. And so they were looking for a new king. And it says, speaking of uh, David's son, or David's dad, Jesse, it says, Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel, and Samuel was the prophet, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? And there, are still, or there is still the youngest, Jesse answered, and he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Verse 12 says, so he sent for him and had him brought in, and he was glowing with health and had fine appearance and handsome features. Man, I wanted to go there with that with Dallas, but I'll let you do that. That's my son. What else can I say? Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. 
And so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Verse 14 says, Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. Remember, he was the first king of Israel. And an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. So Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you, and let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the lyre, and he will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you, and you will feel better. And so Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. And one of the servants answered, I have a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre, and he was a brave man and a warrior, and he speaks well. Did anybody say amen about Dallas doing that? He speaks well. I'm having some fun with you today, buddy. He speaks well and is a fine-looking man. Hey, that's what the Scripture says. I didn't put it in. And the Lord is with him. And, uh, And then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread and a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them with his son David to Saul. And David said to Saul, Enter his service. And Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor bearers. Then verse 22, Then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Allow him to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. In other words, David worked with and for his father and did so with excellence, but he was called away because God had another ministry for him. I can say that Dallas worked well with his dad at our church, and yet he was called away. God's got another ministry. It's all about releasing and sending. Releasing means allowing Dallas to leave our church with our blessings. How many of you know that some pastors and youth pastors They don't leave the church with the blessings of the church. The church is glad to see them go, but that's not the case in our situation. Releasing and sending, then sending Dallas to go on and bless other ministries and bless the people in that community as well. It's all about releasing and sending. I'm reminded this week of a play by William Shakespeare. Most of you are very familiar with Romeo and Juliet. It was in Act 2 in Scene 2. And the scene took place on the balcony when Juliet says the famous words that we all feel today, and you probably know it already, parting is such sweet sorrow. Parting is such sweet sorrow, and I think we all sense that. Dallas and Megan and the girls, we will certainly miss, and I'm going to do this without crying. I'm determined I am. Your courageous smiles and your laughter, I'm not going to do it. Would you say it's okay? We're going to miss your sincere hearts and desire to serve others. Your ability to get along with just about everybody. Even those who made it tough for you at times. You appeal appeal to them with an open heart and gentle words. The Mother's Day pictures and the outreaches that brought us all together. Your pictures on Facebook and Instagram and the church website of all the church activities and events. The weekly text. Yes, the weekly text that were as long as a short story, but we appreciated them. And now I've said what everybody else wanted to say. Oh, me. Your ability to encourage people to get along in our, or get involved in our community. Your contacts in the community that enable our church to be both recipients of tangible blessings as well as enabling our church to bless our community through different events throughout the year. Your ability to help people see the potential they had deep inside and reach down deep for that potential. And with those two darling grandkids of mine and your kids, Riley and Carson, the singing, the laughter, the slime all over my kitchen floor. The excitement of those two darling girls I'm going to surely miss. And I'm going to miss my right-hand man. Who I could call always. In any situation. And he would be there when I needed another voice. 
Dallas, I thank you for your initiative to fulfill the duties of a youth pastor and a church ministries director. I never had to stay on top of you and say, you need to do this or you need to do that. If anything, Dallas went over and beyond the call of duty. I want to say that again. If anything, Dallas went over and beyond the call of duty and the requirements that the pastor and the board had for our church. That deserves an amen. Amen. And those traits are what made him so attractive to another church, another pastor, in their ministries. Thank you, Dallas and Megan and girls, so much. I think we need to stand and give them an applause. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right, hold on, guys. This is not the end of the service. Hold on, guys. This is not the end of the service. I'll give you a chance for the huggies in a little while. You may be seated. In Joshua 1, we find Moses had died after leading the nation of Israel for 40 years from Egypt to the Promised Land. And after his death, Israel mourned and they felt their future was over because their leader was gone. And things would never be the same. Their leader wasn't there. But God had a word for them in Joshua 1. God always has a word for us when we need something. Did you know that? God always has a word for us when we need something from him. And this is what he said. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. In other words, in our setting today, Dallas, starting tomorrow morning when we pull out with those two uh, Penske trucks and two cars, four vehicle train on the uh, 10-hour trip, he'll no longer be here as your youth pastor in person. But then you and all these people, he said, you need to get ready to do something. He may not be here, but you need to get ready. I still have something for you to do. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land. I'm about to give you to them, the Israelites, and I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. And then he went on in verse 5. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And I love these words. We've already heard them. I will never leave you or forsake you. God will be with us, not in our church, in our, church, in our ministries. And be strong and courageous because you have led these people to inherit the land. I swore to their ancestors and to give them. And I just want to say, Bill and Deborah and Mary Ann couldn't be with us today. And, and uh, Debbie and Laura uh, and Sarah, those guys who are taking up. Dallas has trained you so well. God is going to use you to lead in some ways that you never imagined. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Moses, my servant, is dead. And when the ones close to us move away, it feels like a death. It really does. When the ones we've grown accustomed to their ministry move away, it feels like a death. But Joshua told the children of Israel that they had to go on and finish what God had started in their lives, in their ministries, in revived youth, in revived kids, in our church, and in our outreaches. The church has enjoyed and been blessed by Dallas's heart for ministry. And now it's us, up to us who remain to take up that mission and that ministry and go forth in the name of the Lord. We're to go forth. Deuteronomy 31.6, some of Moses' last words of encouragement to Joshua and the nation of Israel. He said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. Once again, you've heard those words three times already in those chapters. He will never leave you or forsake you. So Dallas and Megan and girls, may, they may be leaving, but God is remaining and using uh, you guys who are doing the ministries that they were doing to fulfill the mission and ministry. He's never going to leave us or forsake us. Let me finish up this way. Dallas and Megan, you have not made this decision lightly or quickly. There have been a a lot of evenings in our family room. And 
and in their house and around dinner tables going back and forth with this choice they prayed and cried and received godly counsel and sought God this is not a mere human decision it's the call of God and to use Dallas's cliche that he's used so often that different people have given him the confidence of knowing he made the right choice was you're stepping out of the boat and taking the challenge and that's been your words over and over again as the Apostle Paul admonishes us you have fought a good fight and you will continue to do so now with the blessings of your church and your pastor and your dad and family finish the race that is set before you finish it here are my final words from the Apostle Paul in Acts 20, 32. I am turning you over to God, our marvelous God, whose gracious word can make you into what he wants you to be and give you everything you could possibly need in this community of holy friends. Dallas, Megan, Riley, and Carson, we are releasing and sending you with all of our love, support, and admiration. You will be truly missed. I love you. Thank 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 you. You may be seated. Uh, I believe, Bree, at this time you have a presentation. I believe there's a video that they're going to show. She may say a few words right before that presentation. Thanks, Bree. So last minute, some of us kind of got together and because you guys have done so much for us and there's nothing that we could ever do to thank you enough for this. So if you guys could please play the video. Hey Dallas, ah oh, man, five years went by that fast. I'm gonna miss you so much. Love you. Hi Pastor Dallas, we all love you. Hey Pastor Dallas, we love and miss you. Dallas and Meg are gonna miss you so much. We all appreciate how helpful you've been for all of us and have, how much of a huge impact you've had on our lives and there's nobody else like you too and we're gonna miss you so much. Hi Pastor Dallas and Miss Megan, we love you so much and I wanna thank you for being there and being so supportive and just being there for us. We're going to miss you. So, Dallas, I think that you're a great pastor, and I appreciate you and Megan, and I love you guys so much, and you you really, really helped me with my confidence and with my faith with God. So I love you guys so much, and I'm going to miss you. Hey, Dallas, I've only been here for 10 months, but you really had a good impact on my life, and I'm so happy to call you my youth pastor, and we'll all miss you. Love you. Yo! I just want to say thank you to Dallas and Megan for the love and support they've given us these last nine years. We will both miss you. Bye, Google family. Sorry I never got to say goodbye in person. Nothing you're leaving, but I hope you guys have fun in your new church. These past 14 months have been the best of my life. Because of me going to revive, my relationship with God is the best that it has ever been. And I thank you guys so so much when I gave up on myself you guys didn't you guys saw potential in me and pushed me out of my comfort zone it made me face my fears and because of that I feel like I'm actually living and thank you for everything that you've ever done for me and revive you and Riley and Carson thank you for never failing to make me smile and laugh and I will miss all of you guys so much I love you guys. Wow. I'm going to ask my wife. Thank you so much. Ask my wife if she'll. It really is a team effort. A team effort to get to this point. I can remember being a youth student. I think I was probably no more than 14 or 15. And my a lot of our youth students know my number one goal and you know I'm gonna get one of these takes in okay it's football Sunday 
And you know I love my Cowboys. All right? I'm recording the game, so please don't give me any scoring updates. Shouldn't have said that. Now they will. Okay. Now I love you. Please. So when I was a youth student, and I tell my students this, I, did, I wanted to be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And then I knew, that, okay, that may not happen, so I wanted to be on TV as a broadcaster, be in journalism, communicate. It's fun. Had no clue this thing called social media and texting was going to come. Are we back on? Yeah. Ten years later, and um, I was going to be able to communicate without being on TV. Nonetheless, God, during a Sunday night service, I think I was sitting about right there in our old pews, and my dad got the Holy Spirit began to work in him, and he began to have this word of knowledge, we call that. It's very uh, biblical, where the Holy Spirit gives you kind of a prophetic word for somebody, and he says there's two, two students that God wants to use in full-time ministry. And I'm a pastor's kid, and I'm like, you know, I love my dad being a pastor, but I'm like, I know that ain't me. I know that's not me. Totally not me. It's got to be two others. Megan, do you mind going to grab me another mic? I think the batteries may be going low on this one. And what I realized was that service that calls me up, another student will switch. And at that point, he began to pray over me. Can I tell you what I did inside? No, no God. No God. I don't know about this God. I had no clue my giftings. I had no clue the capacity God was going to give me to love. What you've seen all through this service is not about the greatness that Megan and I have, but it's how God can use vessels. And it took me a long time to say, I'm ready, God. God will use you wherever you're at as long as you say, I'm ready. And if you will give your life completely over to him, he'll change and do something far greater than you could ever do in your own power. Far greater. He cares for you so much more than you could ever think you could care for you on your best day. You know those Fridays when you're ready to rock and roll? How you feel on that day, God loves you way more and will do way more for you than you could ever attain in yourself on your best day. And I remember in 2011, March the 16th, two days before my 35th birthday, I was feeling pretty down. I knew I wasn't in God's path. You ever get that away where you just know you're not where God has called you to be? I was a sports journalist who could work from home and go out and cover football, field hockey, baseball, softball, you name it, wrestling, and then come back, type them up, full-time job, benefits, you would think you're living the dream life. And I was very, very unhappy and not satisfied. And the Lord said, why don't you give me a chance, Dallas? You're a PK, right? You're a preacher's kid, right? Yeah. You know who I am, but I knew it up here and didn't know enough in here. 35. 35. I'd lived for Jesus and had him in my heart, but I wasn't living at that point the way God wanted me to. I was being disobedient in a way. I wasn't giving him first priority in my life, and I knew it, and I wasn't happy. And I began to fast and in March 16th of 2011, my life changed. For, and, and if it wasn't for that day, hitting kind of rock bottom, I would never be where I'm at on this day, November the 18th, 2018. I'm not even sure our marriage would still be where, uh, I don't know. I, you just don't know. When you're not in the will of God, things happen. We love each other to death, but where would our marriage be? I don't know. Would we have two kids or would we said, oh, we can only deal with one kid? When you're in the will of God, he takes care of all those little things. He takes care of marriage, number one, to your spouse outside of God is your number one commitment. And then he takes care of your kids. And then he takes care of your close friends and family. And it hasn't been perfect. We've had challenging times since then. It's never perfect. But man, have we grown. And when God called me in 2014, three years after that, hit rock bottom. I started fasting. I started changing. God started, uh, I, I became a, a studier of the Bible because I wasn't, I knew scripture, but I was, really wasn't studying it. And I became, I began to fast. I lost 40 pounds because I fasted. It had nothing to do with weight. You get what I'm saying? Man, God just takes care of things you're not even thinking he'll take care about, t take care of you about. And when I begin to fast, God begin to give me vision, vision. Like you cannot dream without praying. They go together. If your dreams are struggling right now, just increase your prayer life. Pray, 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 and dreams will happen. I want to leave you with some of my favorite sayings 
If you're a Mark Batterson fan, he's, my, he's one of my mentors. He's a book author. He pastors at National Community Church. I've had the honor of talking to him on occasions. It was just a year ago in December. I don't know him, know him, but I kind of know him a little bit. I sent him an email because some people had given me a great gift. They had paid for a trip, some close college friends that I went on that I couldn't afford to really pay for. And I remember sending Mark this, Mark Batterson, this email thinking I'll just get kind of a canned response back, you know, because he's got lots of followers. And he sent me an email back within 20 minutes, 18 minutes to be exact. And he's, not that I'm counting. And all he did was encourage me and say, I'll, I'll, I asked him if I could get autographed copies of his book, Whisper, which is all about hearing the voice of God. I had no clue what God was getting ready to do in my life in 2018, but I heard his voice. He supplied me with books from my friends, autographed, and I had no clue that was setting me up to hear his voice. Hear his voice. Megan and I both heard his voice. And when we hear his voice, these statements come a path, come to mind. Don't seek opportunity, seek God, and then opportunity will seek you. Sometimes God won't reveal the second step until you take the first step. The only way you can fail at prayer is if you quit praying. Change of pace plus change of place equals change of perspective. God wants you to get where God wants you to go more than you want to get where God wants you to go. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. If a vision is from God, it will be beyond your ability and beyond your resources. And I'll say this much. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough because you don't need God to fulfill it. And if you wait until you're ready, this stuck with Megan and I, you'll be waiting the rest of your life. Go after it through God. Faith is the willingness to look foolish. The sequence of faith is go, set, ready. He wants you being willing to go. Don't let fear dictate your decisions, and if you don't get out of the boat, you'll never walk on water. And then here's the final one, because this really sums up what happened with Megan and I. On May the 8th, I had a three-hour silver diner lunch conversation with my folks. Megan wasn't with me. We were at a minister's conference. And I pitched to them this opportunity that I was not looking for. I wasn't looking to leave. But an opportunity came across my plate of Dallas. Don't know if the Lord is tugging on your heartstrings. He had been tugging on my heartstrings. I'm like, God, I'm frustrated in the months of March and April. What's going on? I just feel like there's unrest, restlessness, and Megan felt the same. And then in May, when we get back from Israel, some of you may know this, we were with four main churches and one of those pastors who in no way were we talking church, in no way were we were just talking about Israel, and I didn't even hang with this pastor and his wife. We got to know them, but we hung with other groups more. It wasn't like I was there to get recruited or he was there to do recruiting. The Lord spoke to him. His youth pastor was leaving in July. And when he got back from Israel... The Lord said, Kurt, I've already supplied you with your replacement. You just hung out with him and his wife in Israel, and it went really well. And when they sent us that message, that was tough because I knew the Lord was calling me to do something bigger and greater than what I had ever done before, and I thought it was here. You see, just to let you know my heart when I was in Israel, if we can show the graphic, guys, in April... 23rd, I was at the Western Wall the, the, in, in Jerusalem, and I don't know if we have that graphic we can put up. And as you can see, I put two pieces of paper into the wall that night on April 23rd, 2018. The first piece of paper was about my family. God, be with, let me be a better husband, a better dad. Help me to be the husband and dad you called me to be. The second one was right there. You're, you're holy, praying for revival of your Holy Spirit in Southern Maryland, starting with Calvary Grace. And I stuck it into the cracks of the wall and prayed. My heart was here and still is here. I will be your youth pastor for life. I may not be here, but I'll be your youth pastor. Moses was always the leader of the children of Israel, but Joshua is the one that got him. 
to the promised land. Bill's going to, Bill and Deborah are going to continue to lead you guys. And you're going to be shocked at how God's going to use them because they have two qualities that every great leader needs to have. They're humble and they're faithful. Humility and faithfulness God can do anything with. He doesn't look for great speaking ability. I appreciate all the parallels to David. But David's speaking ability and good looks wasn't why, because his other brothers were good looking too. And I'm sure they could speak. Someone got some of those DNA traits outside of David in that family of 12. But David was willing, faithful, and he was also a humble dude. Humble dude. He did slip up, as we know, but he still was humble enough to submit himself to God. And so I leave you with, with a verse of Scripture that means a lot to me. We just talked about it. It's in Joshua 1, 5 through 9. And when Joyce called, called me a week and a half ago and gave me this, it could not have been more from the Lord. I was at the bus stop. And a lot of times I don't have my phone with me when I'm dropping off the girls or I can't take it. And I saw Joyce's name come up and I took it. And she said, I got to share something with you. I want to read you with this. Read, read this to you and leave you with this. And then I'm going to ask my wife to share. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. You already heard this. I was planning on sharing it in the message, but it needs to be reiterated. This is to you, Calvary Grace. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land a sword of their ancestors to give them. Be strong. God wants you to know this. Be strong and very courageous. Don't back down. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous. Obedience always precedes blessings. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan. Here to go in and take possession of the land your God has given you for your own. Are you ready, Calvary Grace? Are we ready yeah. to do this? That's what community and church is all about taking the land for christ there's so many souls that don't go to churches that live up and down these streets in your neighborhoods and i'm looking at families represented right here that i would have never met and that come to our church that you saw in the video i would have never met if it wasn't for megan and i god giving us the opportunity to love on others in our neighborhood agricopia and in the outs outskirts in the little plata you have a neighborhood, whether you live in an actual neighborhood or it's your work or it's your, your friends in your area of your street, go after them through the love of Christ. Don't just live life for your own. You'll never be content. The last four years have been the greatest four years of my life and the last six months since May, the most trying but the greatest six months of the four years of my life because I battled God. I battled God. And here's, what he, here's my thing I want to leave you with. If you win an argument with God, you lose. And if you lose an argument with God, you win. You win. Right. And I say, God, just like Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, his dream son, I'm willing to sacrifice my dream, which is to see Calvary. I want to be part of that prayer request. I'm going to be part of it from afar. This church is going to explode. And it's going to be because of your lead pastor, setting a tone. And I thank you, Mom and Dad, from the bottom of my heart for giving me this chance, supporting me, and for that message. And my mom was on board. They wouldn't tell me what it was about. But to release and send means you're being obedient to God and wait and see what happens now. Wait and see what happens now. To give up something that is yours and say, God, I'm giving it up for you. That's when great things happen. Mm -hmm. That's when... God says, you put me before your own desires. It's hard to do. I battled him, did not want to leave. But he wouldn't let me get away from it. At July 3rd youth camp, I get a um, confirmation from the speaker. It was meant for students, but it was right to me. And it was, you're battling a decision and you want certainty. And the speaker said during that altar time, but you just need to step out of the boat. There was like 500 people in the room, and it was right to me. You better step. That was July the 3rd, still battling it. Step out of the boat. 
God will take care of you in all the uncertainty if you step out of the boat. My uncertainty was about Calvary Grace, and he's already taking care of it. He's already taking care of it. What you got for us, babe? Um, I have for... You said that, that um, we've had some struggles along the way, and this morning I said, you're not having me share anything today, are you? And he said, no. So we'll, we'll have an argument about that later. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just, I do want to say that um, I feel grateful to be in the position that we're in, that um, I wasn't, I I didn't think I was called to be a pastor's wife. (laughs) Sorry. I thought I would be the one to escape the tears, but evidently not. Um, um, But he uses us in our flaws and our uncertainties and at times when you don't feel like it yeah. and you don't know if you have it within you to serve and do but um, I feel grateful that he's used us as a family and and used me and we will miss you all dearly but we are going to be back within a month so that's what I just keep telling myself we'll be back within a month so thank you guys for being so loving and supporting and sending us off in this way. It feels so good and so hard all at the same time. So um, it's hard when people love on you because it's bittersweet, but it is very special. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much for being such a good church. Mm -hmm. That's good. Better than we deserve. Much better than we deserve. I'm going to ask Dallas if he'll hand me this mic. We've heard enough from him. We want to go eat. <laughs> no, seriously, we want to welcome all of you downstairs for our meals. It's going to be a great time together. And I'm going to have some of our family first come up around them and let's pray. Uh, it's great to have my brother Dave and his wife. And I'm going to ask Jonathan and Brittany, would you guys join us up here? First, my wife and all the board members and their wives standing around as much as possible, and, uh, and Bill and Deborah, would you guys come up, and then I'm going to ask as many of you as possible, Ken, just, just gather around the front right here, we want to pray the youth and everyone, and uh, when we have my Megan's brothers, mom and dad too. yes, that's right, Megan's mom and dad, would you guys come right up front here if you would, just come, Bud, come right up right on the front here. It's so good to have Megan's mom and dad with us in the service today. It's great. Just stand right up here if you will. We'd love you guys to be here. And my brother Dave's going to say a prayer over Dallas and Megan and their family and then ask the blessing on the meal. And then um, after that, uh, save all of your hugs and comments for downstairs because we're going to slip right through this back door. Dallas, Megan, their family, Bud, Hetty, me and my wife, my brother, and all of his, we're going to beat y'all to the line. And we're going to go through here while you guys go around. And we want to talk to you, but don't hold them up up here. Talk to them downstairs, and uh, you'll have plenty of time to do that. Uh, And thank you guys so much for being a part of our service today. Dave, it's good to have you. Thank you. It's, It's a joy to worship with you today. And I told Dallas, I guess it's been about a couple of months ago, the Lord spoke to me. And I sent him a text and said, you know what? The Lord's got his hand on you. And some great things are going to happen. And that, that, I didn't know anything about this when I sent that. But I do want to share, share this one scripture with you that we've been hearing a lot about today. And I spoke to my heart, John 15, 16. It says, ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you. And it says, and ordain you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that that fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask in the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Yes, great. Man, that's, that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. The Lord has chosen him. Mm-hmm. And I can only imagine how my brother feels but I know the Lord will continue to bless this work and continue to touch him. And I know the Lord's hand will be upon Dallas and Megan and those children. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, yes, Jesus. 
for your Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us, it says, in all truth. And we thank you for the leading that you have placed upon Dallas and Megan and their family. And as they step out in faith, Lord, I pray that you will bless every step of the way. Lord, I pray you'll give them souls for their labor. And Lord, I pray you'll just open up many doors of opportunity for him to preach the gospel and help others as he has done here. And Father, we do pray that you would just give them safety on the road as they travel. Watch over and keep them. And Lord, I pray for Tom and Dionysia here at this church that, Lord, you would just uh, fill them with the Spirit of God and the knowledge they need to continue on in this work. Thank you for these that have said yes to stepping up and helping. And, Lord, I just pray that you will multiply and grow here greatly. And, Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be here. We pray that you will bless the food that's been prepared, those that have prepared it, that it may nourish our bodies, that we may better serve you. And we'll thank you in everything that you do. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that so much.